you start focusing in on the positive people and then your entire life changes around mm -hmm. jim Rohn said that you would not allow a stranger to come into your house take garbage and dumping all over your living room why do you allow people to dump garbage in your mind all the time yeah protect your protect your mind Good morning, everybody. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to our book review of The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy. Uh, one of my favorite books. And uh, let's get right into the discussion, gentlemen. So uh, what are your first thoughts before we get going? Consistency. Yeah? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, That's very important. Small, short, uh, small, smart choices consistently provide big results. Yeah. That's essentially uh, the book. And then he talks, he goes into details on how, what you can do, change your habits, make the right choices, et cetera, et cetera. Right on. Every choice creates a ripple effect. Yeah. Whether yep. it's good or bad. So, yeah, it's, the ripple effect. Yeah. I, uh, well, I've mentioned this before. Like, for me, this is the first ever book on personal development that I read. And it changed my life. I've, uh, it's very simple. It applies to everybody. And you know what? I've given this book probably 20 times, if not more. And I know it has changed the lives of these people, uh, from my wife, from my brother, from friends. Uh, I gave this book, actually, to my wedding party when I got married. The morning of the wedding, I gave them this book. That was oh, my gift wow. for being in the party. That's how much I believe in this book. So, cool. It's pretty cool. Yeah, pretty excited for today. Pretty wise um, what the author did at the end of this book when he wrote down, mention the five people that you'll give this book to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's the first time I've seen that at the end of a book. Yeah. And man, it's so clever. Or even and, at the beginning. Yeah. It's yeah so, I got so. Marty to fill it out since he's the one that bought it. This book yeah. is given to yeah. because I care about you and your greater success. And yeah. Write your name. Yeah. That's good. No, smart. And so, this book was given to me by Marty. There you go. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs> it's a quick read. It's simple. Like, I just, like, went through it like no other book. You know? Yeah. Just like that. Like butter. <laughs> it was a quick book, like, though. Like, it comes not, yeah. it's up wide. Yeah. yeah. There's no fluff. Straight to it. Definitely. And he, he does say that, too. Like, there's no fluff. It's, it's you know, follow this and you'll you'll succeed. No, exactly. Yeah. But he's not, I mean, he it's not, it's not a revolutionary. No. Like, well, change, right? It's just, no. at the end of the day. You know, he's just reassuring you that if you do things the right way consistently in small portions, right? Like, take your time. Eventually, you're going to get there. It feels like it's, like, the entire book feels like it's your dad telling you to do something and you're, like, ignoring it yeah. <laughs> until you see it written down. You're like, oh, shit. Yeah, dad was right, you know? So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you always believe that your dad doesn't know better. Yeah, yeah. And until you realize he does. Yeah. He, for mm -hmm. sure. Uh, before we get into the meat of the book here, let's talk about one concept, the magic penny. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's simple math, but you know, at first glance, it doesn't really um, pop out at you. Mm -hmm. So two people are given an opportunity. Uh, you know, you could either receive a magic penny or receive three million dollars. If you don't know about compound interest, uh, the magic penny will double in uh, in its worth every single day yep. for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we imagine that Rami decides to take the magic penny and Chris says, oh, I'll just take the th uh, three, $3 million. million. Yeah. After only 10 days, well, then Chris still has $3 million. I'm but partying like crazy. Crazy. Woo! You're oh, taking all crazy. the private flights. <laughs> yeah. And um, Rami's uh, got only $5.12. What a bad deal. So how do you feel after 10 days? I just know I, I need to keep pushing. You yeah, know? yeah, you know what's coming. <laughs> got to keep pushing. After 20 days, you've made $5,242. Yeah. Now you're excited. Yeah. It's but, good. Uh, yeah, I still have. <laughs> still have all going to <laughs> bring out the drugs and the alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> the guys going out partying. It's a good night. Yeah, hey, you can good, do a lot with five thousand. Few good nights for sure. Yeah, I can't spend uh, three million in one day. But Chris, you still have three million. No, right, well, probably yeah. not anymore. But I'm probably down to two. <laughs> <laughs> you gained ten pounds. So from that hair. that point on, yep. the magic really happens. And by day thirty, Rami has a total of five million three hundred sixty-eight thousand. And I'm broke. 10 million. That's 31. By 31. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. Hmm. Yeah. And uh, Chris has, uh, what did you buy by that point? Did you buy a Lamborghini? A yeah. A <laughs> uh, house for my mom, for my brother, for Three, myself. $300 uh, haircut. And I, I, I uh, traveled the world. Yeah. And probably died. <laughs> probably <laughs> died. So anyways, just a good example of what the compound effect can do. Um, he also gives the uh, example of the chocolate bar, which was very eye-opening. Um, 125 calorie uh, chocolate bar doesn't seem like a lot. Hey, we all enjoy you know treating ourselves. But if you were to do nothing different for three years, other than have one chocolate bar per day, you still exercise the same. Um, he calculates that you'd be gaining 39 pounds hmm. at the end of three years, yeah. which is it's pretty um, eye-opening to look at it that way, right? Mm -hmm. What small things am I doing on a daily basis that can lead to my success yeah, small changes or my demise you know big big changes yeah for sure for sure and yeah. you start by by the small changes yeah you know like he talked about um, the lady that couldn't save money because she was she, everything was so tight right mm -hmm. and then he, he said okay well you know what just save one percent of your salary put that aside $33 a month okay and then the next month put two percent Okay, and then the month after that, 3%. And then to save that 3%, we're going to, you know, cancel your Netflix account or we're going to, you know, uh, cut, cut off coffee, which is 2 or $3 a, yeah. a day, right? Yeah. And eventually, she started investing more of that money because she was getting clear. She started investing more of that money into self-improvement. She started making more money and everything in her life fell into place. She became a consultant, making 250 grand a year or whatever it was. So she changed her life simply by starting, by starting off saving one percent per day. And he forced or her one percent too. Per right? month. This was a girl that worked for her, I think. Yes, worked and, for him. Yeah, I'm not yeah. sure. Yeah. Yeah. Him, yeah. So she she worked for him, and she was trying to. She he was doing a seminar on how to save money because he, right. he, he's using the uh, richest man in Babylon thing about saving ten percent of mm. everything you do. And uh, he couldn't. Uh, she, she she walked in his office later on and said, "What you're saying is bullshit." here's my salary that you're giving me. There's no way that I can start saving 10%. I need a raise. And he said, instead of giving you a raise, I'll just teach you how to save money. Yeah. I'll teach you how to be a millionaire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what he did. Then it worked according to the story. But yeah, at first, it, uh, yeah. At first she was probably like, what a dick. Yeah. Like, and then okay. she ends up being a millionaire. Like, that's well, it. He's not so bad after yeah. all. Do you guys remember in Jordan Peterson's book, 12 Rules for Life, he talks about aiming lower yeah you remember that yeah i think Small that's victories very applicable that's something you've been saying for years yeah it's a victoire. yeah man but just do when, something small yeah when things are going bad it doesn't take much to flip things around you know whether no, it's man. meditating or working out or i don't know anything talking to someone like little things you can do to completely uh, flip side your world and what he's trying to get people to do is not to do like a grandiose gesture or start working out like crazy like the example he was using is you know if you haven't worked out ever and you start working out two hours a day five days a week yeah. uh, it's going to become too hard at one point now you're motivated but you're not going to be motivated forever so at one point it's going to be too hard to do it it can't fit your schedule and you're going to find an excuse not to yeah. go yeah. so his whole premise is don't put a new routine in that you're going to be able to do for two, three, six months. Do, do one that is sustainable that you're going to be able to do for the rest of your life. Yeah. So that you, it's a lasting change. It's a compound effect. Like It takes some time to actually happen, to see the magic happen. It takes almost two years and a half according to his math so like it's just don't do something that you can only do for a couple months yeah it's yeah. not gonna work you're gonna be back to square one so we're, since we're talking about habits um i think he said it would take 300 days for a habit to actually become like uh, subconscious it yeah. would become like something that you do without even thinking about it yeah mm -hmm. 300 days until it becomes like a brain groove yeah, yeah. exactly a brain groove yeah how crazy is that? Normally, it's you hear others say two weeks or three weeks. Or I month. think that's to make it more um, l l less daunting for people. 
you might hear that 30 days, right? What he was making, the point he was making is it can be a habit in the three weeks or 30 days, but the brain groove is it happens um, unconsciously. Yeah. You don't realize that it's happening. Yeah. So like, for example, the example he's using is you get in your car, you put your seatbelt on. It's an automatic. You don't right. have to think, I'm getting in my car, oh, I have to put my seatbelt on. It happens automatically. Yeah. Right. But at one point, because that's a brain groove, it's it's ingrained in you. In order to get in a car and not put your seatbelt on, stuff needs to happen so that you, you remove that habit. You relax. And it's the same thing for putting in a new habit. It's easy for me now to get up at 5.30 because I've been doing it for a little while. But it's not a brain groove yet. Like, it's not like, oh, it's automatic, I get up at 5.30. It's not there because I've, you know, obviously got up way later a lot of yeah. times. So, but it's it's 300 times every single day is going to make it that it's more than a habit. It's like subconsciously you're doing it. Yeah. That's the difference. So it's important to do to choose to do something that's doable. Yeah. Right? It's the only way. Yeah. Because if you try Thanks to do so that way. massive effort, you know, right from the get-go, you probably will end up pushing it off. Yeah. Well, his point it's kicking too. Kicking a bad habit is hard too, though. Too, right? It like is. It's so many, and, and it's it's like almost you're, you're doing the reverse. You're cutting out, you're cutting out something, right? I want to cut out smoking completely. Like I don't smoke that much, but I want to just completely cut it out. There's no point. Yeah. Right. I get it. And obviously, they talk about triggers. Um, and then they talk about the friends that you're hanging out with that smoke, right? Oh, yeah. Like, it's a lot harder to do than just saying, I'm going to do it. Yeah. It depends on the personality because he does talk about how him and his wife quit coffee is one, one step at a time. And he also mentions for some people that's that doesn't work. Like for myself, quitting smoking is cold turkey. If I would have said to myself, okay, I'm going to cut back on smoking, forget it. I tried it. doesn't work. For me, I had to, to go all in yeah. and tell people uh, um, to be held accountable by telling people on this day, uh, on this date, I'm going to quit smoking. And I kept telling people that I was going to quit smoking. And I didn't want to look like a fool for not being, uh, for not succeeding. So, you know, it, it just, it helped me having people uh, holding me accountable for, for stop smoking. This cold will help you quit real quick real quick oh yeah yeah this cold <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I have minus 20 no today no yeah design. it's uh called a pda in the, the book uh, uh, public display of uh uh attention attention, yeah. attention. Uh, accountability I accountability guess. isn't that what he says the, mm -hmm. the, the word is public public display of attention well no? it comes from public display of affection yeah but that's not what we're talking about but in the book he says uh, accountability okay. yeah public display of accountability yeah like if you're posting uh like mm -hmm. our friend um, he's uh, going through a weight loss thing and I saw him post online you know that he's at the gym every day right and man that guy's in the gym every morning I yeah. saw him there well, again this morning it works he's down 27 pounds in like yeah. a month yeah. it's crazy yeah. but he sort of made it public that hey listen I'm no longer gonna so you know live this healthy. this is what it does too having the uh, Apple watch like we're all following each other we're all competing against like each yesterday other. I was, should I start wearing my Apple watch again uh, you should you should, you should. All right. yeah yeah no it's um I started pushing myself a whole lot more at the gym because I know you guys are looking at what I did and, mm -hmm. and I'm looking at what you guys did. Yeah. And so I hopped on the bike after my workout yesterday and just like kept pedaling and pedaling. I'm like, these guys, I'm going to get them. Well, actually, I lost again. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know what, and this, and this is what I'm this doing book more. club does too, right? It motivates you to read. It yeah. motivates you to stay up to date with what's going on, to continuously uh, try to improve. Yeah. Like, how, man, how many books did we read last year? Think 16. About that. 16 books. 16 right? books. I'd, I'd like to see all these books, books on this table right here and, and see what that looks like because we'll it's take hard to a, wrap my head around. We'll do a little photo op after yeah. Yeah. of the books that we've or read. Just, this, or or just year. an episode on all the books and what yeah. brought us. A wrap-up yeah. episode. And because that's be exactly what this book is about. Yeah, man. Right? That's exactly what this is about. The number of books that we read this year, 16 books. As much as I would have loved to start with this one, I think it's it's a good practice to finish with it, yeah. to realize what we did and to realize what we need to keep doing in order to make this thing. People are talking about New Year's resolutions right now, you know, how 2020 they're going to kill it. If one of your goals is to read books, just subscribe to this channel. Yeah. Right? For sure. And follow along with us. You just pulled a hardy. 
at the end of the book where he says you should give this book you're like plugging yourself in like, like yeah a, like a yeah. darren hardy you mean so yeah. i'll make no you did a hardy <laughs> i'll make you guys a deal uh the first five <laughs> people that reach out to us in the youtube section in the comments below and say i want to use the compound effect we'll ship you a book for free 100%. first five people so this is on it. and um you need these types of because it's like we're real people this is not a motivational channel right now so you can you can follow along the books because we're all in it for the same thing we want to learn we want to get better in our respective careers right like it's we're all chasing the same thing but not everybody has the um, motivation to do it yeah right so if you follow along and you it like you exactly what we're doing now right yeah man. that's that, that support group helps you it's like alcohol anonymous yeah right? you go to that support group and and you help get clean bookworms anonymous bookworms anonymous yeah that would have been a better you know book how many club name <laughs> just <laughs> I, I like the one we have now <laughs> I just, yeah. just in the last two weeks everybody um, a, a few people had messaged me hey what's your book recommendation i really want to start reading next year yeah man Mm -hmm. You know what? Like that's it's it's actually such a great way to start. Yeah. Because you know what book we're gonna start reading the first week of the program, and then you you start. You start or even off. if somebody has a good book that you've read that made a difference for them, yeah. Let us know. Maybe it's a Please. good book for us. Yeah. Comment down below. Yeah. Let us know what you guys have read. If it was impactful, and you know, we'll we'll look at it. In ten years, we would have read if we keep that same average, one hundred and sixty books. It, be, it takes four books to become smarter than 90% of the population on any topic. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, I mean, you won't become an expert. You won't have a PhD level. Yeah, by that time, we'll be able to teleport. That's how smart we'll be. <laughs> you know, um, a few, a while ago, uh, about uh, uh, just the same, same topic, about three years ago, I made a decision to read one book a week. Okay? Wow. Uh, with all honesty, I wasn't able to do one book a week, but I was at least able to do 40 books a year. Wow. Okay. 40 books a year. Yeah. Wow. But so what I would do, but I did it all wrong because I was chasing. I just wanted to finish the book. But it's it's harder to apply, yeah. to apply what you learn in the book if you read too many. Exactly. Yeah. And and you're, you're just, you just want to finish the book. At that point, it's like, okay, I have 80 pages left. My deadline is tomorrow. I need to finish this book, right? So you you finish the book. But you didn't learn anything. All right. So now what I'm what I've started doing is basically what we do here is I'm actually taking notes. Yeah, man. I'm reading these self improvement books. I'm taking notes, and just right now I'm actually learning how to speak. I want to speak better. I want to be a better speaker, a better communicator, a better storyteller. So my goal is to read ten books on how to become a better storyteller. Right. And um, I'm gonna take my time with them. Like I'm yeah, not gonna rush through them. I'll try to do one every two weeks. Darren said one thing once that really stuck with me, and uh, I I try to do it, I'm not 100% effective, but so he said every quarter I start the quarter with I want to learn one skill, whatever that skill is doesn't matter. It can be becoming a, big, a, big, a better speaker. I want to learn how to promote on social media. You want to learn the piano? It, it, exactly, yeah. it doesn't matter. But every quarter you take something, you take a skill, and you learn that skill. If you do this, you're going to learn four new skills every single year. Yeah. And think about it. You'll be way better off from it than just trying to do a million things and not really applying anything, right? But you take one skill that you become really good. So he gets one book uh, that, that he finishes. He listens to audiobooks, to podcasts. He only takes care of that one subject in three months. And he probably becomes better at this than the professional that learned this 10 years ago yeah. and now he's current with all the new things plus he you know that's one you only do one thing in three months so you get good at it the podcast uh, podcasts are actually really good source too ah for sure i need to write this down <laughs> before i forget yeah so let's move on to the uh, second uh big idea which is owning 100 percent of everything that you do right um whether that's your relationship your work um i don't know your health right you are 100 percent responsible it talks about the husband and wife if you ask a husband you know what's your responsibility in this relationship you know most people will say it's 50 50 mm -hmm. you know or 60 40 but yeah. the, the good answer and i agree with darren 
wholeheartedly on this is each member is responsible for the relationship 100%. Before he explained the concept of the 100%, did you agree? I, I've i heard about this before from Earl Nightingale. Oh, true. Yeah. Right? And, uh, you know, you should always look to yourself before you, you point your, your finger outward. He says when you have one point, one finger pointed outward, you have three pointing back at you. So, you know, it's just a good visualization to say, well, if you're seeing something wrong in the world, there's probably something you wrong, know, with, wrong you. with you, yeah. you know. If if um, if you would have asked me that question, I would have said fifty fifty. It's yeah. it's what you usually hear. Because yeah. yeah, same for me. Cause it, I it's not a I popular this. answer, but it makes so much sense, and and it, it made me realize, or it made me look at my relationship and think, well, when I when I do something for for my girlfriend, am I expecting something back from her? Totally not. And I think for the first time, that's why for the first time in my life, I'm I am where I am yeah. with with my partner. You know, so it's important to to be all in mm. and to give 100%. The example that he used that like if you do things well for somebody, you're nice to somebody, they will react differently to you. Oh, yeah, so using sure. that concept, like if I compliment my wife every morning, you know, I'm not sloppy around the house, I do things to make our relationship better, she's going to be more reactive towards me our relationship is going to be better. Mm -hmm. So instead of just starting by blaming her because, you know, she's getting on my nerves, well, maybe she's getting on my nerves because she's reacting to somebody, something I did earlier. Oh, yeah. So that concept changes everything. And it's the same thing with your clients. It's the same thing with any member of your family. So th mm -hmm. this phenomenal concept when you think about it. Like yeah. The responsibility is on you. Of course. Stop blaming, stop blaming anybody else. No, you, that um, makes sense. And he, he talks about the, the three guys, Brad, Scott, and whatever the, the third guy is and how they were each they're each friends and they each started doing things differently one of them remained the same he never changed anything in his life yeah mm -hmm. and then eventually when you don't change anything in your life you get bored you get angry you start fighting with people around you and that's exactly what you're saying like you have to be almost by improving yourself owning up to your choices it's going to help your relationship Mm -hmm. With everybody, not just your wife or your girlfriend. You know the example that he used that he took, uh, he he wrote in a journal for one year, like a Thanksgiving journal. And for one year, every day, he would write something for five minutes that he liked about his wife that day. Mm -hmm. I did this. Okay, so funny story. I did the, after reading the book, I did this. And I'm like, and my goal was to give it to her. When I the day I proposed, saying ah, this is a book of all, so I, I did like I was writing in it, and like a month before I proposed, I told her to read the book. Oh. So she read it. <laughs> she read it. Oh, so when man. I gave her that book, she's like, oh, like Darren said, and I'm like, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> you but I mean, up. she would have eventually read the book. <laughs> she would have eventually read yeah. the book and realized it afterwards. But <laughs> for at least a little while, That's the surprise would have been good. So yeah. did, did but, you, you wrote in that book for a complete year? Um, Because the year, I think it was about six months. Wow. Okay. Still, that's, she and, still said yes. She said yes, yes, there for sure. <laughs> She's so still I gave, I did, I gave her the book around. at dinner and I proposed later on. So, like, I got her on my side before proposing. It worked. <laughs> so, wow. it, still, it still happened sort of the way you Yeah, Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, it, it happened exactly like he said. Like, you start noticing good stuff. Yeah, man. That's it. Like, yeah. small stuff. Like, oh, I like the dinner you cooked today or yesterday. Or I like this. And I like how you interact with your family. Like, it, you know, I like how my family likes you. You know, it's stuff like that. It's yeah. just – and you, it reinforces – why you're with her right yeah. like, mm -hmm. so it's i believe everybody should do it yeah it's a good it's, exercise it's a really good exercise but again it's consistency yeah. yeah i have to admit like there's some days i wrote three because i didn't do two days in a row right it, it did happen but the importance is of doing the action yeah. the amount of which you do is not as important like um you know showing up to the gym i didn't have a good workout this morning but I still went. The watch says otherwise, though. <laughs> no, I, like the watch says that it was one of my poorest, you know, uh, train training days. But I still showed up. And yeah. if I do that for another year, then, you know, the health level goes up. Exactly. And you kept your the, habit. The importance was, okay, get up, just 
put your shoes on go to the gym yeah. yeah once you're there you can do a crazy workout or you could do like i did this morning something you know so so but the results will it's still... better than not going exactly man. well you don't break your habit of going every morning exactly. the hardest part of working out is going yeah like it's getting up and going mm -hmm. in the cold when it's minus freaking 40 this morning right? yeah have you guys yeah, ever heard cool. about the push-up challenge like yeah. one push-up a day challenge yes i've heard about that so the idea is that it's not you don't have to do 50 push-ups ever but you have to do one every single day the the theory is that you're going to start with one and you're going to be okay with it but yeah. eventually you're there you're going to do two you're going to do 10 you're going to do yeah. 15 yeah. you're on the ground and and there's never an excuse that you can't do your push up your push up there's always one like 10 seconds that you can use whatever you're sick whether you're not in shape whatever you're always there's always a way you can do one push up a day at a listing appointment Excuse me, sir. <laughs> well, you know what? You, you, you tell that to your client, they'd probably be in, be impressed. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. It's just, it, it'd be funny. They will forever remember you. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, yeah. I just got to do my push-up for today. But, like, it builds consistency. And the theory is that eventually you will become that you uh, you want to do more. You know, it's going to be a challenge. Oh, let's do 25 this morning or let's do this. And then you're going to do two, three times a day. And eventually you'll be in shape. Uh, yeah. For one year, do one push up a day. I guarantee you, you'll be in shape after a year. Have you guys heard of Quora or Reddit? No. No. no? So there's this, uh, I always go on these things, and it's real people talking, right? Yeah. It's uh, not Reddit. Always. Okay, yeah, yeah. Reddit or yeah. Quora. And there's real people. I don't know talking. what Quora, Reddit, I know. Yeah. And your story kind of reminded me of this. So there's this, there's this guy. He was very scrawny, very skinny. And he had a problem, you know, getting girls and he had a problem with it at the gym and all that stuff. So he told himself, I'm going to do uh, 10 push-ups a day, every day. And he posted pictures of the way his body transformed and the way his life transformed with it. No way. So his goal was to be better looking. And in turn, he just became better in school, became a better athlete and became better looking. His confidence yeah, came. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Just by consistently doing those 10 push-ups a day then eventually was 10 and 20 and then 30 and then 40 and now he was he's like doing 200 push-ups a day or something like that right so this is a real guy yeah man like it's you don't write you know it's not in a book it's a real guy that was just giving his experience to another guy that was going through the same thing he was going through yeah. a few months back once you improve one area of your life everything rest, else follows the rest right? it's a ripple follows, effect man. so yeah, this yeah. stuff this stuff is, is is powerful yeah it works and it's nothing crazy it's not like go run a marathon. You can like, you know, you just go step by step. Oh. You good? Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it works, but as long as you do the work. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of the issue with a lot of people. You know, you do a lot of, you read a lot of books, but you never get up from your couch. Yeah. Nothing's going to happen to you. It's going to be the exact same thing. Right? So, so let's talk about that aspect that's a bit more woo-woo and, you know, uh, crystal healers and stuff like that. The law of attraction. He talks about it in this book. Um, you guys have all heard about the secret, mm -hmm. you know, the concept of, you know, dreaming of something. Yeah. What are your guys' thoughts on that? Because uh, he talks on, on about the it. the secret? Like the book, The Secret? Well, I guess we could talk about it because mm -hmm. he does, you know, talk about that concept in this book. That made a, a big impact yeah. on a lot of people's lives, that book. But what they didn't realize is that that book took what he's talking about in the compound effect, what thinking grow rich, uh, grow rich talks about. Um, so, um, the quote, um, Napoleon Hill's quote, what the mind can believe it can achieve. Yeah. I don't know if that's the exact same way it goes, but that's basically what the secret is. And like the example that he gives is that when you buy a car, all of a sudden you realize how many cars the same as the one you bought are on the road because now you're open to receiving that information you're seeing it everywhere so it's just it can be the same thing for every aspect of your life yeah the only issue for me with the the book the secret is it kind of involves exactly what you're saying the yeah. law of attraction but it omits the biggest part in my opinion mm -hmm. and it's the action yeah yeah, yeah. you gotta it's, act on it yeah like, I, if i dream and i read good books but i still sit on my couch and i do nothing with yeah. it i don't care like it's not gonna happen to me well, it's just not they, they, they <laughs> simplified it and they glorified it like i remember one part where they talk about just sit there and imagine you're driving the, the car of your dreams and you're just like driving 
walking down the street and like okay but you need to you, you need but to have but an that motivates plan. you it, it, it yeah. it's great because it opens your mind to it yeah but you have to go and get it yeah like it and it, like it's hard work it, it is what it is like you, you you can't just expect it yeah there's one step missing Mm -hmm. exactly. And it doesn't need to be a massive effort, just something small, consistently, right? Yeah. That book was more of a money grab, I think, for oh, people who time. don't read. But uh, like, you need the secret. Awesome. <laughs> great, great. Well, tell me the secret. Yeah. I'm not great, sure if it's in the same chapter, but he talks about your why, obviously, like the purpose of why you're doing yeah. it. Yeah. Right. And I wrote, a, I wrote down why. the quote here. Um, why power? What is it? The why power. What is your why? Focus on the fulfillment and not just on the achievement. Mm -hmm. Right? Like we're in, a, we're in a business where you want to get that, you know, top 1%, 5%, whatever tag on your email and tell everybody that, hey, you know, I'm the top agent in the city. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but that's not going to make you happy. No. And he happy. says success without fulfillment is failure. Exactly. So if you yeah. do achieve like, you know, top salesman in your area, but you have no why, no, no reason to get there, you know, not, no one to celebrate with, like, what's the point? And why that will force there? you what to take do? action. Like that yeah. will force you to get off the couch. Like this is my, if your why is not powerful enough, then you're in the wrong business. Yeah. So find something else that will make you get off the couch, make you wake up in the morning, go to the gym and, and start off your day. Well, walking that 12 foot, 20 foot plank uh, across yeah. two buildings, the yeah. example yeah. used was yeah. so good. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. There's 20 bucks on the other building. You have to walk in a, to like a, a 20 foot foot plank mm. and you might fall on the ground. Will you go and do it for 20 bucks? No. no, but if your kid is on the top of that building and the building's on fire, you will go of course. Yeah. because that's your why. Mm -hmm. you, you really want to go, right? So it won't be any problem at all. No, you you know. don't, you're not even going to think about it. You're going to go and do it because your why is stronger than 20 bucks. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And he mentions also that there was a study with psychologists that said that if whatever you're doing conflicts with your core values, like this is the biggest, the, the, the worst stress that you can have, doing consistently stuff that goes against your core values. Mm -hmm. So um, when I, I, there's, I took another course from him that said the insane productivity and uh, to write your goals, the way he explained it is you start with your core values, you figure out what you believe in, then you do your why. And you're gonna find that your why is aligned with those core values most of the time. So then you write your goals to try to achieve these your why yeah. so you start with the core values why then goals and it's going to be a lot easier to do it and you're going to be able to get to stay motivated a lot longer because everything you're doing aligns with what you care yeah. just being aware of what you want that's it makes a huge difference mm -hmm. let's let's be honest there's a gazillion things going around around us yeah. there's the radio playing you know there's your your iphone that has a thousand emails mm -hmm. you know yeah. that need your attention if you focus on one particular thing that you want let's say you want we'll talk about getting a listing mm -hmm. if that's your goal this week then your brain will be tuned to that frequency and you know those million bits of information that are all around you they'll narrow down to oh shit i'm in a coffee shop and i heard somebody you know what, Sandy, I'm thinking about selling my house. And then your brain will pick that up. And then the rest of the stuff, you know, there could be baristas banging, you know, cups and, you know, the espresso machine is going crazy. But your brain will make it so that you'll hear that <laughs> comment. And then you'll get up and say, hey, listen, Sandy, <laughs> you know, um, I could help you out with that. Anyway, so that's a silly example. It's not. It no, but it's your, it's, it's a very your brain one. does focus yeah. in on whatever. Yeah. Is it you that mentioned when you buy a new car, you see that car mm. everywhere? Well, he, Darren yeah. mentions that in the car. Man, it's in like book. focus on what you want, but yeah. go out there and make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know, It well, doesn't there, need to be a, a heroic action. There are billions of sensory, I'm yeah. uh, not sure what the word is, but like senses that are coming, coming to you every day. Like some things you see, things you hear, smell, touch. Your brain is only taking like 0.11% of that. Yeah. Right. So it, it will focus to what the brain believe is important. And the that, rest is all white noise. And that's mm -hmm. that goes to the last book that we read, The Sapiens. We've evolved to be focused on the important things. 
if there is a beaver over there and a blue jay over here and um, I don't know a gazelle over there but there's a lion you know uh, hidden behind those those trees and you can you won't focus on that beaver no. or that blue jay no. you know no. you'll be focused on the important thing which it'd is, be cool to see all those animals in the same ecosystem I was thinking just the same thing <laughs> so, so you're probably uh, in a zoo <laughs> whatever but I mean get the point you'll, yeah, yeah. You'll, the point you know is, what I'm saying yeah. right yeah, the, the brain the brain has evolved much more than than just fight or flight. The beaver could probably mess you up though. Well, if he starts chewing at you and you're not moving, <laughs> like if you're you gotta be pretty pretty drunk, <laughs> some big teeth. If you're tied down and the beaver starts going at your leg, <laughs> and he needs to build a dam. You're going oh, down wow. <laughs> off track. <laughs> nice, um, nice, nice. Yeah. Anything else on the law of attraction before we move to the next concept? Well, uh, can I yeah, uh, just sure. look into the uh, formula for luck that he had in there? Mm -hmm. And I think it yes. works on that too. Yes. Because there are a lot of people that are mentioning, oh, I'm not lucky or, oh, you got Pitch lucky 31. for this. 31. Yeah. Consistency plus. Arnold Palmer's quote is in there. I just, I wrote that because exactly. Exactly. There, there's a few good, good uh, examples of well-known people in the book. Um, like um, Jack Nicholas's pre-shot dance, you know. That's like, that's still like there's no way. Like I have a hard time believing it yeah. just by hearing it. That yeah. from taking his club all the way to swinging, he does the same thing every single shot. There's one second difference. Yeah. In the whole round. Yeah. Unreal. Same thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but he kept he kept uh, consistent. He, he, yeah. yeah. The importance of morning routines. But the Arnold yeah. pa uh, Palmer quote is like one of the best golf uh, players of all time. Yeah. Just mentioning, it's funny. Every time, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Yeah. Like it is what it is. Like the more you do, you're, you'll get lucky. Yeah. yeah. Like mm -hmm. the formula, it's just you know you have to prepare, which is a personal growth side of it. Yeah. Your attitude needs to be in check, which is the belief and the mindset. And then there's always opportunity opportunities that are coming, but if you're not prepared for it. If, you know, like people are saying, oh, yeah, somebody bought an investment property. Oh, he got lucky. He found it. Yeah, but he also saved some money, had the money in his account. So when he saw it and then when he looked for the pro finding a property, he died. He, yeah, he was able to buy it. And, yeah. it. yeah. and then the action is doing something about it. And I like we mentioned before, that's the part that a lot of people are missing. So preparation, attitude, plus opportunity, plus action equals luck. Yeah. That's it. We can all be lucky as long yeah. as we're doing the right thing. Oh, that's right. And that yeah. investor probably looked at 60 other properties before he jumped on that one, you know? That's it. But if you're staying on your couch every day and hoping to get into investments, it's just not going to happen. Exactly. Yeah. Well, that makes a lot of sense. I find he should have put in there, I guess attitude has a lot to do as, as the same as mindset. Like there was a point in my life where I kept saying, oh, there's this thing called the Chagon shit luck. Like my sister would say that like everything that. bad that would happen would happen to me until the day I realized that, you know, oh, this shit's been happening because I'm just not happy. I'm miserable. And, and I remember those days. Yeah. And, and, and the day I, I um, started being um, the day I, I accepted the fact that these things were happening because, you know, it was all on me. It changed. And I talked to my sister and she's still like, oh, shagon shit luck. And my dad says the same thing. But it's like, well, if, if you take a step back and, and look at why these things are happening, well, maybe if you start focusing on the positive of whatever shit happened, then it'll stop happening. For me, it make a big, it made a big difference. Well, maybe sometimes you just put yourself in that situation. Well, stuff would happen, you know, like my wiper would jam and then my sunroof was stuck open. My window was stuck down like all at once. Well, I started laughing about it instead of being like super pissed. And these things like finding the, the, the positive in, in the, the negative, yeah. um, whatever scenario that would happen, it, it made me realize that, you know, it's not all that bad. And changing your attitude towards that. It's will, such a more pleasant way to go through life. Yeah. And, and guess what? It's it stopped. You know, yeah. so called shagon shit luck just stopped for me. So. Shagon shit luck. No, it's just yeah. shagon luck. 
There you go. That's it. There you go. There you go. Lucky, yeah. lucky Chris. Yeah. Shells, shell. It's, it's true though. It's it's all about how you approach different scenarios or things that happen in your life, how you react and how you move on. Right. Seriously. Well, yeah. That's good, man. Yeah. Garbage in, garbage out. Yeah. Talks about that uh, towards the end of the book. If uh, if you're if you've got CNN on in the background, there's a good chance that you're probably stressed out of your mind. You know, I used to be that way. Uh, I remember when I moved to my condo in uh, in uh, Orleans. You know, I had the cable and CNN was always on in the background. And then you always hear about the, you know, fucking horrible stuff that goes on in the world all the time. And eventually you start questioning, oh my God, is this world, you know, coming to an end or, you know, everything is going in the bad, bad, bad direction. All of a sudden you cancel that cable and there's no silence so you start to focus on positive stuff you start reading books like this you start maybe uh, listening to a 10 minute video clip by gary vaynerchuk you know you start focusing in on the positive people and then your entire life changes around mm -hmm. jim Rohn said that you would not allow a stranger to come into your house take garbage and dumping all over your living room why do you allow people to dump garbage in your mind all the time yeah protect your protect your mind yeah. right and i thought that part of the book really resonated with me for sure it also allows you to to find more time in in your daily routine to read up on on positive stuff and and like reading books like this and he does mention that transforming your car into a mobile classroom right. is a, a game changer and ever since podcasts became a thing and these audible books like it's, it's so much better driving around and listening and learning at the same time you're gonna think that i'm, that I'm old technology but i have the compound effect i have the cds of it oh, yes. it's six different cds these and they're in the car they're, i have them in my truck i used to switch them val would have them for a while then i'd have them and we just every time either of us would be in a rut we'd put the cds in and bang we're back on track like every <laughs> single time yeah. And to get, to get I don't think to, you're old school, man. That's, to get back to CNN, like yeah. I used to believe, for real, like for all my adult life until I started reading this, I used to believe that I needed to, I needed to know this stuff. Yeah. I needed to know current events. Oh, I'm in real estate. I need to know what's going on. But the reality is, how much of that actual um, news is relevant? Mm -hmm. Ninety-five percent of it is just this happened in this country, or this happened like somebody got busted for drugs, somebody got hit by a car, somebody like I don't need to know that. Someone was yeah. impeached. Listen, I, I, I do matter. like to read. I do like. Oh, I like to read. Um, you know, the Economist because but that's give, different. Yeah, it gives you it gives you world news. That's knowledge and it's for your job. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Um, yeah, it is knowledge for sure, yeah, and yeah. I enjoy it. Like it, it's good reads. Sometimes they have a science section and stuff like that. Seriously, um, but you but don't need to to find out that five homes burnt down last night. No, you in know? Kentucky. Yeah, no. well, it would be yeah, yeah, in, unless it's exactly. a Kentucky yeah. restaurant. Then that sucks. Ah, that's yeah. sad. The CNN, uh, Not a bad thing. you know, I just never listen <laughs> to the news, whether it's on the radio or on TV. And I was like you, Cedric. I actually thought listening to the news makes me smarter, but it doesn't. They are there to get your attention. And it's the easiest way to get your attention is to make you outraged. Yeah. Well, it, it comes back to uh, our DNA. We're built and designed to be aware of bad stuff, to be aware of that tiger here. So your mind is designed to retain that information and to want to know, right? So the more bad stuff is out there, the more you're gonna look. And it's just, it's just a cycle that never stops. Yeah. And then once they're done with this story, bang, they're gonna move on to the next one because people stop clicking on it. Like they're gonna talk about a problem in the Middle East and it's real bad. And then nothing happened to that problem. It's still the same bad. As, it's just as bad. But nobody's listening to it dude, because it's white noise now. It's been bang. And there's a new problem. Something's bigger now somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. It's it, like they could have just stayed there. It's the same problem as before, but people not clicking on it anymore. So then they're finding another big problem somewhere. Yeah. You stopped watching sports, right, Marty? Completely. No sports at all. Do you guys watch any sports or you've stopped that as well? 
You don't care for it. I, I follow highlights on certain subjects. Like I'll follow hockey, I'll follow I have a friend in the NHL, I'll follow what he does. But it's only highlights. I've watched maybe three games right. since the beginning of the year and it's been like one period. Okay. Yeah. I know you follow a lot of sports. No, well football is the only sport There's I There's nothing follow. wrong with that. It's a hobby, right? You love it. But for me, following the Sens, it wasn't like yeah. Well, it's because it's the Sens. It was it was consuming <laughs> me. I was like yeah. and it wasn't good because I would get up, look at the stats. Who's performing? Oh, they fucking traded this guy. Oh, but <laughs> it's like you get upset for no reason. But I still enjoy going to a game here and there. Yeah. Like we went to the Vegas Nights uh, in Las Vegas. Oh, that was Man, fun. That was yeah. fun. Yeah, that was uh, fun. Sporting events are fun. Just watching it on TV. I just Meh. don't need that hobby. The worst thing I don't need to be it, consumed. It's by. a distraction. It's, it's it fan. Is. But fan- like, can, like it's fantasy so things sports. I can do on a Sunday yeah. than watching sports all day. Fantasy know? sports is the worst thing that can happen to you because to, to your productivity. I'm, I'm in the I'm in the championship. I, I'm right, in one. Weekend, like I'm right? in one. My I'm, team is performing well. But you know, to perform well, you have to look all the time to see because you you know, oh, this guy is doing well. I'm gonna drop my. I'm gonna want to go if, get this guy. You need to be informed 24 seven of stuff lose, that happens. <laughs> I used to be in three leagues. I brought it down to two leagues. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm in the championship for the second year in all this this year because I stuck to a plan see. and I just did the right thing throughout the entire season the same formula I used last year right so I'm actually looking at it now just to make myself feel better yeah yeah as I'm running my own business and I'm just doing the right thing sticking to the formula without letting myself get emotionally attached to it that's good there's nothing wrong with it it's just I believe there's a lot of things wrong with it Marty. I believe that you <laughs> have a distraction you have a you, have, a you start every day with a bank account but in that bank account it's not money it's attention And you're spending that attention every day. Right. And you can only get a certain amount of attention every morning, right? And once that's gone, you know, your your willpower goes away. Your, your, you know, your drive goes away. So you need to focus on the important things. Having a hobby is not a bad thing. That's, yeah. I don't want to poo-poo on fantasy leagues because I know it's super popular with a lot of people. I need to stop that. You just need to. <laughs> hey man, I build I build Legos. I like. Yeah, me too. I'll, I like that. Yeah. I'll, uh, on a Sunday evening, you know, my dad buys me uh, like these Lego sets every year. And Those I are love nice. doing it's, that it's, stuff. Yeah, that's good. No, it's, it's, it's It stimulates your brain a little bit. It's, yeah, yeah. It's my it's number one reason to want to have kids. Yes, because you want Legos. more Legos. I want play. I want to play with Legos, and people won't judge me. My, yeah, yeah, yeah. My son plays with. Are Legos you judging me all the time, man? No. I just okay. Bought, <laughs> I just bought the, uh, the the NASA rocket one. Nice. It's cool. I'm just man. finishing it up. Yeah. And nice. I got me a Bugatti. Yes, you sat in the picture of that. I got a. It's got three thousand pieces. Yeah. Yeah. It's not the electronic one, is it? I could put the motor in it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. It's cool. Man, they've improved since I was oh, kid. Sick. <laughs> They're awesome. So I know I want to um, get my I want to get my sorry I want to get my son involved in that. It's good. Yeah, yeah. there's robotics mm. competitions with Legos now. It's oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. Um, we could go down the Lego rabbit hole. Yeah, oh. you got to be careful. It's, so uh, even for for a small book, it's tough to get through the entire like the entire book in in one sitting because I really wanted to talk about Big Mo. Momentum. 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 Well, let's go into it. So are we out of time? Is that it? So we're at 45 minutes. Does anybody have a hard out? Yeah. You do? Yeah. How, can you give us 10 minutes? You got I have, five yeah, minutes. I'm in 11 o'clock, yeah. Gotcha. Five minutes is enough. So we have one um, competition that we talked about doing. Um, are you guys all on board for that? Yeah, I am, for sure. For the month of January, choosing yeah. something that we want to do. And something Very, small. Something small. So that's every single day. Yeah. So have you guys thought about those things and what they are? Yes. Yeah. I have. Yeah. Okay. So for me, um, I've got some business in Mexico City that might be coming up and I'll need to travel. So I am gonna focus five minutes every single day on learning Spanish. Okay. For all the month of January. And we'll check in at the end of January and see you know how how i've done i don't know yeah. did you think of something yeah yeah so you we'll, want to share it absolutely so we talked about uh well both of you i talked to not, not you but you're welcome to join too um it was about just tracking uh the big thing about 
tracking is you don't um, you don't know how well you're doing or how bad you're doing if you don't track it. Mm. And so I am going to get back. I had built a tracker before, and I'm going to get back into it. I'm going to figure out what I need to do to be successful in all for all my goals, personal and business. Mm-hmm. And um, the one thing is that I want it's just a tracking it every day. So every task that I do, just going to track it. It's so once a day, you go into the tracker and you put it in. Okay. And it's a habit that I had before. It was never brain groove, but it was a habit, and I clearly lost it, and I want to get back into it. Okay. And at the time of my life that was rocking the most, I had it. Yeah. Uh, I can see that. Cool. Is, yeah. So for me, something I struggle with is going to bed with, with a clear mind. I always, like, my, my head races a, a thousand miles an hour soon as the lights are off um, and I wake up the same way so for me for the month of January I'm going to focus on meditating I'm going to try that out 10 minutes every morning already downloaded uh, an audio book to help me out and uh, yeah I just want to learn how to let go of certain things that are out of my control and uh, just have more headspace so that's okay. that's mine cool love it um so, like I, I, I mentioned earlier, I want to become a better storyteller. Yeah. I want to become a better speaker. So, what I'll be doing for the month of January is writing a story every single day. Woo. Wow. And That uh, one's exciting. Yeah, I'm going to write a story every single day about anything random. And um, I am going to say it out loud for 5 to 15 minutes. So, we're at, we'll see how long the story is. And that's uh so one story or like different stories every day yeah one separate story every day wow. you so the whole process will really take cool. about 15 to 20 minutes i'm gonna write a story in five ten minutes and then i'm gonna say it out loud uh for five minutes cool that's you should great. record yourself to to replay it yeah so you'll like you'll know how yeah. good or how bad you are and how to improve that's amazing yeah. Listen cool. to it in the car uh, like we'll, that, see, we'll see how that goes, man. So yeah. we'll check in at the end of January. I'm almost thinking of changing because that was such a good one. That well, an maybe awesome I'll, one. Man. I'll tell you. I'll, I'll pick my favorite story at the end of January and I'll <laughs> give it to you guys. Like <laughs> Let's write the book quickly. I know Rami's got a run here. Did you want to talk about Big Mo? Ah, we're done. Okay. Momentum, basically. January is going to be proof of that. So yeah. small things you can do every day. It's like... A train that's moving it starts slow and then it's fucking unstoppable even a wall won't stop it so that's what big mo let's keep is going. yeah let's yeah. keep going like i said the, the book is small but there's too many things to talk about for one sitting but it's also too small for like two sittings yeah. two two episodes so but yeah go ahead rate the book so for me this book is a book that i'm always going to refer back to and I'm really thankful that you guys introduced this book to me. I had no idea what it was. Um, I mean, the compound effect is self-explanatory. I knew what it was going to be about. Um, it's just, I'm definitely going to use, I was telling Cedric, um, I'm definitely going to use, I'm going to go through the questionnaires and the and the uh, templates that he he gives us at the end of the book. You can download it on his yeah. website. I think it's called thecompoundeffect.com. I'm going to use that uh, next weekend on my way up to Toronto. I'll have a four and a half hour drive. So I'm just going to, I'm going to fiddle with it and see what I can do with it. Um, All that to say, I'm going to give this book a four and a half. That's good. 4.5 bacon. Hmm. Chris. So crispy bacon. So, so this was your first self-help book. Yes. And mine was think and grow rich. So I'm having a hard time putting this over think and grow rich, but it's, it's simplified. Um, it's something that's easily uh, readable and you can follow everything he says, um, you know, easily. <laughs> so I'll give this book a 4.7. Um, I really like it and it's stuff that I'm going to use from now on for sure. And it made me realize that some stuff in there I've, I have been doing without even thinking about because of other books. So it was just a reality check of what I, I need to keep doing and what I need to change in order to uh, become a better version of myself. Good checkup. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it is It is kind of, and Darren, Darren says it in the book, it's kind of a summary of thousands of people put into one book, like to what they're doing success, successfully. Yeah. Uh, but for me, it has to be a five out of five because... It changed your life. 
it changed my life. Huh. Like if if I don't give this a five out of five, I'm never gonna give a five out of five because I don't think there's any book that could have the same impact that it had on me, just because at the point that I was. And uh, I, if somebody comes into this open minded and you read this book and you have the nothing in your life before that you feel like is personal development or anything, it will change you. It can be for anybody that is, um, anybody that's, I want to become a better husband, oh. a better mother. Like success, like j jumpstart your income, your life, your success. Nobody's defin definition of success is the same. It doesn't matter what success means to you. All the, like, th all this can be applied towards anything in your life. It doesn't have to be business. Any single thing you want to do. Yeah. You can be get better at or an expert at. Five points. Five points. That's good. Five bacons. Five bacons. I will. It's one of my favorite books of this year. So I'll have to. Um, I'm hesitant with the five points, but I'll give it a 4.81, which makes it the highest. One. Makes it the highest rated book for me this year. <laughs> nice. Um, one of my favorites for sure. Cool. Um, just yeah, because I rated Sapiens 4.8. This one's 4.81. That's why I'm I'm giving it that note. Hmm. Um, we should write down our points yes. before we even talk about them, and then once we're ready, we turn it around. Because I wonder if they'd be different. I wonder if if they would be different. I like, always uh, I always look at your 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 scores and then I think about mine. Yeah, I know. Yeah. So you should start writing it well, down it, <laughs> before we even talk I, about. I, it. I agree. Like the first <laughs> book we did, the first time I was in. Like if everybody would have said three point five, yeah. I would. There's no way I would have said four and a half. No <laughs> yeah, way, yeah. right? So it, it's a good point. We yeah, should man. definitely do that. The lowest we ever got was Spark, like three point five, three point seven yeah. five. Yeah, it wasn't a terrible book. No, exactly. Just, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All so right. Yeah. yeah, let's wrap this up. And, We're good. Uh, we'll talk about the next book. We'll be back in January, yeah. taking a two week break of the uh, the book club. As always, don't forget to like and share this video. If you're watching um, uh, the, the book club on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel. Engage in discussions in the comments below. Uh, this is a group activity. We're doing it with all of you guys. And it's a great way for, for us to get more out of this process by having you guys, you know, being included in the conversation. So I'm going to sign off now. Uh, we're still working on this part of the book club. Uh, we're going to say keep learning, keep growing, and keep reading, and we'll see you next time.